Hello, I'm Robert Israel, and I'm here to talk about the score which I've arranged for the film Judex. Films made before the 1930s have been termed silent pictures, which is actually a misnomer, because in those days, films were usually presented with some kind of musical accompaniment. In my exploration of scores from films before 1930, I have come to understand that there is a great consistency in how scores were put together. Let's take, for example, a sequence in a film running one minute in length. Now, 10 seconds alone is a deadly length of time for any kind of silence, particularly when looking at a moving image. Thus, composers in those days and music directors understood the vitality of having a well-composed piece of music. The distance of time is compressed greatly because not only are you distracted by a visual image, but by the pleasant, melodious sounds of fine music. The marriage of the two is profound to the effect at how a film of this time plays. For example, if you have an agitated sequence and the music doesn't quite live up to that agitation, the sequence can lose a great deal of its intensity and drama. But finding the right kind of music certainly sets off a scene to such a way that it draws a viewer in and really enraptures you in the moment. When I chose the main title theme for Judex, I was looking for something that would represent Judex, a very strong, powerful character, and certainly the centerpiece of this entire story. The music I finally selected was a composition by French composer Charles Alcan. The piece he composed was a piano etude called Concerto for Piano Without Orchestra, perhaps one of the most fiendishly difficult compositions ever written for piano. This particular music I felt striking because, upon hearing its initial motif, it's practically unforgettable, and it has a great deal of strength and power, and because of the size of this composition, offered many opportunities for thematic material. From there, I was able to orchestrate this particular music for full orchestra and apply it in many different guises throughout the serial without sounding repetitious. With regards to the main theme, my feeling about it is that in its beauty, the strength of its opening, these quarter notes, two quarter notes, an eighth rest followed by an eighth note, bum, 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 is a very singular and markedly distinctive theme. It represents for me majestic strength, some real fervor and a genuine passion. Thus, for this character, Judex, which incidentally in Latin, Judex means justice, is for my way of thinking, highly appropriate to this particular character. I spent a couple of weeks orchestrating this piano work, and orchestration is not just merely reassigning notes to be played by various instruments in the orchestra. One has to have an understanding of the instruments, the range, the effectiveness, their technique, and how they ultimately play as an ensemble together. Thus, the complication of arranging piano music for orchestra cannot possibly be overstated. In the score, Alcan suggests perhaps trumpet or trombone for some of this opening. And of course, because I had a full orchestra, I was able to use horns, trumpet, and trombone to give a very strong and powerful brass entrance. I had the fortune of recording this in Europe with my orchestra in the Czech Republic, and it was very thrilling to hear this full symphony orchestra perform this music for the first time. Selecting the music for this film poses one problem, but arranging it is a whole nother problem. It's not just a question of merely reassigning notes for an instrument in the orchestra to play. It really is a problem of understanding what the instruments do, how they work with instruments in that ensemble, and how the overall effect is going to be once you put all these instruments together. And in an orchestra, you'll have complete string section, two sections of violins, viola, cello, bass, two kinds of flute, which would be flute and piccolo, clarinet, oboe, bassoon, horns, trumpets, trombones, tuba, and a whole assortment of percussion. So the question comes into play, how do you orchestrate such a piece? I worked on the orchestration of the Judex theme, this concerto by Charles Alcan, over a period of about a month, and finally came up with what I thought were satisfactory results and was really gratified to know that not only did it meet with my approval, but also that of my peers, my musicians. No matter how great the musicians are, you are still ultimately responsible for getting the proper balance and getting an overall quality of sound that is going to work well. 
Creating a score for a film like Judex poses incredible challenges because you're talking about a length of film of over five hours and a quarter. To come up with music that you can use thematically and not be so repetitious is probably the greatest challenge. The film itself seems to be rather clear in the motivation as to what kind of a sequence it is, whether it's humorous, whether it's a love scene, something very tender, or something intensely dramatic. Thus, the problems of compiling a score for this kind of subject gives you a great deal of latitude, and yet because of that, one has to be extremely careful. Because there are so many varied characters in this particular production, and it is an absolutely delicious spectacle of character play, it really prompted in my mind many possibilities, musically speaking. The very opening, for example, after the title sequence, when we're introduced to Morales and Diana Monti, I composed a little theme that I felt was characteristic of French music, rather mischievous with a slight hint of sinister quality to it, yet very mischievous in a somewhat dark way. With regards to the character Favaro, I was able to choose a rather dark and sinister kind of march. Um, not a dirge, but a very strong and dark quality as his character is quite evil. Judex, as I've already spoken about, has the Alcan theme in many different guises. With regards to the Kokatan character, his is obviously that of a humorous individual, and I was able to find a piece called The Bullfrog Shadow, which for me had that playfulness and frivolity which Kokatan has throughout this entire production. One of my favorite selections for any of the characters is actually for the Licorice Kid. This is a piece called Passeul by Frederick Ross, composed in the early 20th century. It's a very sprite, very lively composition, and I feel it has a genuine charm as only this particular child could possibly have. I think this music really captures that and somehow works miraculously well when the Licorice Kid is on. With regards to some of the locations, I definitely felt inspired, for example, by episode four, The Secret of the Tomb. This I knew, this entire opening, had to have something of a very specific and particularly sinister quality. I found another composition by Charles Alcan called Overture, another one of his piano etudes. And the challenges of orchestrating this were no different from orchestrating the Judex theme. It is a very sinister, very intense composition, and I felt really captured the mood of this very dark night, this evil deed which the evil gang was about to perpetrate. And somehow, even the climaxes in this composition worked amazingly well with this particular sequence. With regards to the Chateau Rouge, I found a piece by French composer Félix Foudrin called Entracte Symphonique. It was written about 1913, and again, has a different kind of sinister and intimidating nature to it. Ironically, for the entire opening of episode number eight, I use this Entracte Symphonique for an entire five to six minutes. It seems to reflect all the changes in disposition of the characters on the screen you almost begin to think, gosh, this music was composed just for this film. During this era of film exhibition, presentations of film varied from theater to theater, even within a large city. Some theaters had piano, some had pipe organ, some had ensembles of anywhere from two to eight players, others had small bands of maybe 15 players, and in your larger theaters, you might have an orchestra of anywhere from 20 to 30 players. So the quality of presentation really varied at this time. And the question here comes, how was Judex exhibited? Chances are because it was a serial, despite its popularity, was probably not given any significant musical treatment except for the house musician. Probably in most cases, a piano, possibly a small group. 
a symphony orchestra would be very doubtful. In Europe, they had already discovered the possibilities of film with orchestra. One of the groundbreaking scores in this era was for the large, epic Italian picture, Cabiria. For that, a large symphony orchestra score was compiled for the picture, and this film, running over three hours, was presented this way. In fact, it was this particular film that inspired D.W. Griffith to make not only longer film in feature length, but also to use orchestra. One of the first things that I do when I accept a project and I begin to score the film is I actually will start watching and almost immediately ideas start coming to me regarding a particular film. It's almost impossible for me to look at a silent picture without hearing some kind of music going through my head and imagining what I might apply to that particular picture. For example, if looking at a film set in a Russian setting, of course, I'm, my mind is going to be considering music of Rachmaninoff, Tchaikovsky, Prokofiev, people of the Russian school, because it is so embossed with that flavor. If, for example, it takes place in France, as does Judex, I'm going to approach this with much more consideration to the ethnic tone of the music. Very few original scores were composed during this time for a feature or particularly for a serial. The reason is that the serious composers wanted to write for the concert hall. They would like their music to be heard as a concert composition, not as an accompaniment to a film. And a film might have a running life of anywhere from six months to two years in the theater circuit. And even then, it did not guarantee that that score would be presented with that film. Therefore, few scores were actually composed for films. Most scores were compiled from existing music, source materials in the music library or in the repertoire. For example, the Capitol Theater in New York had a collection of almost 20,000 different compositions, everything from mysteriosos, dramatic tensions, love themes, funeral marches, parades, comedy chases, one steps, tangos, waltzes, any conceivable form of music. And from that, a music director at the theater could assemble a score and have it distributed to his orchestra players. When I'm watching a picture for the first time, I am trying definitely to tap into the emotional sphere of what is going on. To be completely intellectual on the subject is a mistake, and the same is true to be completely emotional. One must think very carefully how a sequence is going to be affected by the music. For example, Chapter 3, The Fantastic Dog Pack, I think is one of the brilliant moments in this entire serial and posed a great challenge for me. What are you going to use for this particular sequence? To open it, to accompany the dog pack, whatever it is. And of course, I thought to myself, well, it has to be the Judex sequence. And I must say, I thank Charles Alcan for the inspiration because during the cadenza in this 30-minute etude is a brilliant passage of great heroics which I felt captured that spirit of excitement, hunting chase, just a great feeling of Judex is making a heroic moment to protect Jacqueline with his fantastic dog pack. The question of whether to use a classical composition or a piece written between 1900 and 1928 or to compose something for the film is definitely problematic. Take, for example, the prologue sequence in which the character Kerjan, the tramp of destiny, is introduced. His character is one of definite sadness. His life has been filled with tragedy. He is tired and exhausted. And the opening, showing him in this cemetery looking for the remains of his wife not to be found. Immediately, I felt inspired by a very familiar composition by Norwegian composer Edvard Grieg, Solveig song from the Peer Gint Suite. It's very somber, mournful melody, very melodious. For me, captured that element of his tragedy. And in fact, ironically, Grieg composed this to represent Peer Gint after his long journey to return home disillusioned with his entire experience in the world. This is a man who has been disillusioned. This is a man who has suffered long.
My feelings with regards to music and film is that I believe because we see so many films and we hear music so often, it is something we genuinely take for granted. And particularly with films from before the 1930s which require music, so much is genuinely misunderstood about this particular realm by the general public. Most people will anticipate a rinkety-tink sounding piano and some cliched accompaniment, when in fact music in those days, and even today, is generally of a rather sophisticated nature when being applied to rather important film. Music genuinely affects images profoundly, and this cannot be overstated. If you remove the music from these sequences, yes, the images may remain beautiful, but in the terms of its overall structure, narrative, its delivery, it's missing something. The final result which I really desperately want to achieve is that the music becomes so clear with the film that you are absolutely thrust into this particular milieu, this film itself. You're so involved in the characters and the action of the story that you forget all about the music. And that is undoubtedly the most difficult achievement for any silent film score.